This video will help you understand how to configure flow settings on your base station 3200 for irrigation systems with simple hydraulics. For sites with more complex hydraulics or multiple water sources, even multiple main lines, you'll want to watch the additional video. Before we do any setup, it's a good idea to understand your hydraulic layout. My site looks like this. Water source 1 is a 3 inch water meter connected to a 2 inch master valve and a 2 inch flow sensor. These join the 3 inch mainline that I'll call mainline 1. There are many different variations, so a simple sketch goes a long way in setup, especially as you start working on complex sites. Begin by opening a browser and going to baselineapps.net, then log in with your username and secure password. Once you're in, look for the base manager icon on the left side of the screen. Before we get into flow setup, we we'll want to verify that our flow devices are assigned. Select the Devices tab and look for your master valves in the assignment list. I don't have any pumps in this section, so that's empty. There's only one flow meter on this project and it shows up in the list too. Now that I know I have devices to work with, click on the Flow Setup tab. Select Water Source 1 and then Edit in the lower right corner. It's always a good idea to name your water sources so that they make sense to you. I'll add a description to Water Source 1 to reflect its location. Water Source 1 is enabled by default, so there's no need to change that, and I'll leave the default water source priority alone. If I had multiple water sources, I could prioritize them and select which one I want to use first. This water source is associated with Control Point 1, but there are a total of 8 different control points available. If you decide to use a monthly water budget, you would enter it here. When you're done with Water Source 1, press Save before exiting. The next item to set up under Flow are Control Points. I'll be working on Control Point 1, so once it's open, select Edit. I'll name Control Point 1 to reflect its location. Control Point 1 is enabled by default, so no need to change that. This control point is already associated with Mainline 1, though I could associate it with different mainlines on more complex systems. Now I'll set my flow limits. I'll set the design flow to 100 GPM, which is based on the size of my control point. I looked up this information in a pipe friction loss chart, but if you're not quite sure how to find this info, your baseline distributor or baseline rep can help. I'll try out an additional 20% for the high flow limit, so that's 120 GPM, and then select shutdown. The design flow means that I'm okay with 100 GPM all day long, but should it ever exceed 120 GPM, it will alert me and then shut down. I don't have any pressure transducers on this project, but if we did, I could set pressure limits here. Unscheduled flow is flow that runs without the controller knowing about it. An example is someone using a quick coupler or manually bleeding a valve. Both pull water from the main line without the controller knowing about it. I decided not to select shutdown, so anytime someone uses more than 20 GPM of water, I'll get an alert, but it won't shut down. The last thing to set up are devices in the control point. Since I've already assigned devices under the devices tab, I have one flow meter available in the dropdown. Notice that the pulses per gallon and k-value automatically populate because this is a baseline flow sensor. If it's a different flow sensor and you're just using a flow bicoder, you'll need to input your own k-value to get an accurate flow reading. There's only one master valve in the dropdown to select. This master valve is normally closed, so I'm going to leave the normally open box unchecked. If I have a pump or a pressure sensor, I'd be able to select them here. That's all we need to do, so save your work before leaving control point setup. The last item to work on under flow setup is mainlines. By default, all zones on a new base station 3200 are assigned to mainline 1. Since I only have one mainline, there's only a few other settings to adjust. So select mainlines and then edit. First, I'll add a description to mainline 1 to reflect its location. And like I did before, I'll set my design flow based on my mainline size to tell it mainline capacity. Sometimes when mainlines initially fill up, you can get high flow readings that later go away, but cause alerts. You can give the system additional fill time under flow stabilization settings. Normally it starts taking readings after one minute, but I've just changed it to two minutes of pipe fill time. The system will ignore high flow readings for a full two minutes, and that's likely to stop excessive alerts. There's no need to change this unless you're having high flow errors though. The Manage by Flow setting enables the controller to run multiple zones at one time up to the design flow of 100 GPM. 
it might find 250 GPM zones or three 33 GPM zones, all while staying under that design flow limit. It is important to go back to your individual programs and increase zone concurrency to make sure this works the way you like. Right now, I've just set the flow variance limit to 20% and clicked shutdown. Should the flow run 20% above or 20% below the expected flow, it will alert me and then shut down. If I don't select shutdown, it would only send an alert, but no shutdown. A useful setting is advanced flow variance. If I select use in the right hand side, it will ignore the above flow variance settings. Now I get the option of adding a range of flows based on the expected flow. I've decided for flows 300 GPM and above, I'll tolerate only a 5% variance. For flows between 125 and 300 GPM, I'll tolerate a 10% variance, all the way down to flows 25 GPM or less, where I'll tolerate a 20% variance. You may need to experiment to find the right settings for these, but if you have a wide range of flows, this is very helpful. I can also shut down for high flows, but not shut down for low flows, just get alerts. There are times when getting some water applied is better than shutting down and getting no water. Under zone assignment, I can see all the zones that are assigned to each mainline. Since I only have one mainline, all of my zones are assigned here. The design flow column will later be populated with flow values after you've learned flow. It's always beneficial to have a flow sensor and get real-time flow, but if you don't have a flow sensor yet, you can manually input these flow values. It's time consuming and not quite as accurate, but it will allow you to use that manage by flow feature. Lastly, save your work before leaving. A reminder, if you haven't already done it yet, don't skip the program learn flow or zone learn flow operations. You can do this either at the controller or through base manager. It's that last piece in the flow setup. Base station 3200 controllers can accommodate eight water sources, eight control points, and eight main lines. That lends itself to a wide range of options that are difficult to cover in just one video. If you reach out to Baseline for help with complex flow setup, gather your site information and have a sketch ready. This will make that process all that much easier.